Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Here is a blooming flower setup that I have done late 2019 for November. Uh, in the demonstration, I have shown two methods. Uh, one of them is menu and the other one is automated uh, infinitely looping animation. Uh, I've made a tu menu tutorial but have never continued for the automated version. And the people wanted to make this tutorial, so here it is. And just to note that this setup is on Gumroad for free, So, but of course if you would like to contribute and donate, it will also be welcome. So let's start. So here is the Gumroad file that I posted for free, and it's completely procedural and uh, infinitely loopable as shown in the demonstration. The only thing which is different from the demonstration is I changed the uh, word texture into a CC01. So basically now this is it. And because the node tree, the original node tree becomes too complicated, that's why I share this file for free. I don't think the method is outdated, um, but I, I don't think I'm going to do the same if I'm going to do that again. But this method is really not outdated. Uh, it's just that uh, there are multiple methods to achieve the same results. And because this node tree is too complicated, and you probably forget if you are not following the last tutorial, or you forget about last tutorial, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to continue um, the tutorial based on this node tree. I'm going to start with a new thing and a new node tree. So let's just start. Just to create a new thing and start with a new node tree. So you just hit this button. You're creating a new node tree. Uh, every time so when you are generating a new node tree, always turn off this always, and use the other trigger instead. I've made a tutorial talking about the trigger, so you can take a look on the right upper corner uh, if you would like to dig more into animation nodes in the future. But uh, currently, this is it. So here, we firstly need to know how to actually loop an animation within Blender itself. So let's just uh, create a cube empties. It does not matter what does it look like, because it's just for demonstration purposes. And if you mouse hang on or this kind of scale, you just hit I, then you're adding keyframes on three axes at the same time. And for our flower petals, if you're considering about its scale, then we start with from we start from zero. So we have nothing. But then after a period of time, it just uh, go everything goes to a certain scales and then everything goes back to zero. This is how our petal actually has been scaling itself. And this is the animation. But the problem that you will see is it's not a looping. So one way that you think is probably just the shift D to duplicate all these kind of keyframes and the duplicate it over and over again. But this is not a way how it works. There is a easier way. So if you just select the one channels in the graph editor, you hit ends and there is a modifier options. Within modifier, there is a modifier which is called cycle. So by default, it's actually called repeat motions. Uh, there's also other types that you can actually choose like the repeat with offset repeat with map a mirror In this particular case for our looping animation We're going to use the repeat motions and the repeat and the repeat mirrors based on the con exact conditions That you are going to have one thing I want to remind you is that you can change all these kind of interpolations for sure so that's Which will actually you will see the difference between the repeat mirror and the repeat motion so here we're repeating the motion. So you just basically duplicate the same keyframes over and over again, uh, as what we just did. But the un in, un in this case, you just uh, make your life much simpler by not duplicating the actual keyframe, but use a modifying stat. But you can also use the repeat mirrors, which is just mirroring and the mirroring and the mirroring. So based on the situation, they will look kind of different. Uh, at some point, I think repeat motion is something what we want in this case. Now, if we play these animations, we still don't really see these cubes actually looping itself because we don't have. We apply to the modifier to the x skill, but we does not apply the modifier to y and z. It also becomes very troublesome. You just add a modifier again and again. But a very nice way is you can actually hit this copy f modifier and select the new channel and. The, paste the modifier. So you just paste the same modifier and it basically it does the same thing. So now the loops and just to make sure that all three channels should actually be uh, with the same F curve so that it looks kind of normal. But I'm not going to fix that here right away. 
Next, the topic is about how to. So now we have all these kind of keyframes within and empties. But can we do this the same in animation nodes? It's not a simple. Uh, if you have the object transform output, and let's just make a UV sphere. And let's turn on all these kind of skills. If you hit all these kind of, uh, if you hit I, you are not adding actually any keyframes. This is a limitation within Blender. So all these kind of custom nodes, animation nodes, server chalk, uh, shortcut nodes, they cannot directly keyframes within themselves. This is a limitation. But a very nice workaround is you can simply just take the object transform input and select our empties that we just created and you link the skills to skills so now by playing this animation you can see how this actually Q sphere has been changed so this is the basic way that you can keyframes in animation nodes this is something I've discussed uh, within my animate in animation nodes tutorial that you can also go straight up a corner there are many other ways that I will discuss later so here this is the basic animation uh, in the actual animation the scale is just one part of uh, the entire looping uh, if you look at all this kind of animation what actually happens is not only the scale that actually goes up and down but also all this kind of deform what happens within the setup is we are using the simple deform modifier to actually bend all these kind of pedals and the bending uh, function is that you have a very large curvature at the beginning of this pedal life but later you are flattening the selves until the scale stop and you repeating the motion again and again okay so how can we actually do these kind of simple deform functions it's basically use the same principle but it's just a little bit different than nodes so here let's just say create a plane in edit mode, I'm going to just remove that and rotate uh, on Y 90 degrees and I'm going to apply the rotations so I'm going to loop cut several times basically recreating our flowers by applying to uh, by applying the simple deform we can actually deform as our paddles we see previously and because we have billions of flowers there, so we have to use animation to control the simple deform within all these kind of paddles. I'm going to use a node which is called attribute output. And mouse right click and copy the path of these angles. And control V to paste these values. So now it says the value has the wrong type. You can take a simple float, actually just a simple float. Float input. You actually control the actual angle just to know that there is a conversion that we input a radius but it outputs as a degrees so which means if we type in a pi then the angle shows to be 180 degree so be careful here and to do the actual animation we basically use the same way as we just did earlier but if you directly put the scales into value this is value has a wrong type because we're inputting a vector, but what it needs to receive is a float. So here we just separate a vector because a vector is basically three floats, uh, each on X, Y, Z plane. So this is how it has been animated. But in the actual case, I suppose uh, you realize that the paddle should not actually rotate in this way. So we're going to type all this kind of value in the location instead. It does not matter what you actually take. It only matters you need a you just need to input something. So I'm to make everything simple. I'm just using these locations, location socket. So, uh, this is also a very good way. I locate all this kind of animated data into a single object instead of flying around all these kind of nodes for different data. So within these empties, initially I should have a very large locations. So let's just type in three. And at the 40 seconds, I think the, when the animation all finished, I think it should close down to zero. And within our X locations, then we definitely should loop everything. Like just paste it down the modifier that we copied previously for our X, Y, Z scales. 
and be aware this is actually the repeated motions and here I think keep a repeat motion is fine let's just uh, see what we actually get and within our planes I'm going to take that for the transform as well so we can see the entire animation so let's scale up and scale down so this is how panel actually looks like it's not perfect because you have to tweak all these kind of curvature and other things but this is just the kind of basic form about how it actually looks like what I did in the past was actually to use in another kind of node so if you hit the shift A and it goes to animation there is a lot of nodes with a uh, there is a animation ser animated node series which is called animated matrix, animated vector, animated float, animated color, animated ULA, animated quaternion, etc. And you can take an animate vector. Uh, the node you see might be a little bit different from uh, what you've seen here because uh, I'm still using 2.91 and this is already outdated very much. Uh, but generally, you won't uh, really see too much of difference, especially in this particular case. Uh, even if there, this node contains additional function, it's not something that you need to worry about because we're just uh, looping that over and over again, ideally. So what it does, you just uh, it's mandatory that you put a time info, um, or you can actually use the same way as we do with the object transform input. But the things I don't want to keyframe anything, I just use this time info. So you, you put a time, which actually tells the frame numbers and the duration, which means that the, the interval between the keyframes, which is the start and the end, is about, the, let's set that as a 40 frames. And we can definitely, well, let's just take that as end value to be one and take the result into the scale. So let's see its effect. Uh, one issue that you may realize within this time info node sometimes, if you have multiple scene, then you need to make sure your animation node is attached to the correct scene, uh, especially for this time info node. This time info node, if you hit the control H, it can even expose uh, the scene that you need to control. So basically, to get a more solid idea about the info that it shows. Otherwise, it is showing the, the time info of other scenes, so this time info won't move. Anyway, you can try by yourself if you have multiple scenes. But usually you don't necessarily worry if you only have one scene. So, once you have these flowers, and let's play the animation, and you can see its skill originally is zero, and it goes to one, and then it stops. No more animation. And also, this is a, a this animation node only defines the start and the end, so you don't have more controls like how can I actually go back. So if you would like to have the same animation that we previously have earlier, that you have a, you start from zero, you end up at one, and then you scale down as zero. So this kind of animation, you need to work with the interpolation. So let's take a curve interpolation. Basically the X axis is the inputting values, Y axis is how you deform the value based on the start and the end. So if you would like to have a start at x, or start at uh, 0, and end at 0, then you just drop this entire, the end to be 0. But if you would like the middle one to be the end, then you just drag that up. So basically y axis is based on the start and the end, but x axis is based on the input value. And the input value is a comparison between the frame time and the duration. Okay. And in such a kind of case, you can see it basically do the same animation, it's just another looping. So what if you would like to loop this animation? Then there is a node which is called repeat time. Then, so the rate is basically the same as the duration. You can type that as a 40. So you can see this is how it works. You can also use ping pong. Ping pong is basically just a mirror. Loop is basically offset, uh, just a repeat motion. And uh, this was it. So you can even put a floating input to synchronize the rate and the durations, like 40-40. 
so that you only control one value instead of two values. Uh, but this is something that you can manage by yourself. So I apply basically the same theory to all other uh, parameters, for example, the object attributes and output. In this case, we need a float instead of a vector. So you can just use the animated float to do the same thing. And basically, this is it. The in reality, if you would like to have all the motions, which looks kind of natural and nice, things is very kind of difficult. And that's why I show you the node tree, because you can see there is a lot of interpolation that I've tried. And it looks kind of very bizarre. But it's just a thing that happens. And the values is also something that you have to tweak. So that's why I didn't plan to make a detailed uh, tutorials because I think it's not generally useful in specific case. And I'd rather you use this kind of keyframe method to loop this animation. But uh, it's a free for a choice. You can actually study this node tree or use this node tree uh, however you want. Uh, attribution is welcome. But anyway, and uh, again, if you would like to really instance this kind of flow, then I suggest you to actually use these empty methods so that you can get a multiple flower very easily without uh, specific knowledge about animation nodes. But uh, again, you really need to actually know that the collection operation, uh, which is very important. So basically, you just create a collection. Uh, this is called a temporary. And then put everything into temporary. And you better get uh, then you get everything. Oh no, actually this is not right. You need to put the instance range actually. So now you put all this kind of pedal in the collections. And instead of uh, instancing the the animation of the object container, you can instance in this temporary so that it, uh, you prevent any other object that has been instanced in the form of the animation node. So this is all about it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye. Um,